All right, this is my last YouTube video. I'm going off the grid. I'm not gonna live by the rules anymore. I'm not gonna eat their food. I've got this poncho. We've got some emergency food rations, emergency water, and I got some emergency blankets. So I'll be fine out here. And if you're wondering how I'm gonna use the restroom, uh, actually, hold on one second. Let me check something really quick because if the Wi-Fi is still off then, yep, uh-huh, yeah, no, she's still gonna turn the Wi-Fi off. So I guess I am gonna have to go off the grid and live out here. Oh, you don't want me to shit in here? Well, I'm sorry, I already am. Excuse me. Grandma put the Wi-Fi back on, so we're back. Welcome to room 666. Today we're gonna be talking about Leave No Trace, the newest film from Deborah Granick. It stars Ben Foster and Thomasin McKenzie. Leave No Trace. Deborah Granick, let me tell you, this movie gave me a winner's bone and that's the highest compliment I can give this film. Let me tell you a little bit what it's about. So, a father and daughter are living off the grid. They're living out in Oregon in a forest on their own. Nobody knows they're out there, but the daughter gets seen by somebody. So they get caught by the cops and they're forced to live in society because if they don't, they're gonna get separated, go through all this crazy process, but Ben Foster, who plays the father, isn't really able to do that. He, it's hard for him to live in society, whereas the young girl, played by Thompson McKenzie, she doesn't really know the world yet. She's not really too aware of what goes on in the world, so she's not really, um, you know, she doesn't have the same reasons to be against it as he does. Uh, so when she goes out into it, when she discovers the world, it's, uh, you know, fascinating. It's, it's, it's new. It's, it's, it teaches her stuff, and that's what I really, really, really enjoyed about this film. Uh, it's something that I think Deborah Granick did fantastic with the story, is keeping it moving, making it have an impact on what the characters are doing and how they're growing to the end of the film. It's just a great, great exercise in how you can do these sort of character study films where, you know, there, there is a plot sort of, but it's, it's, it's very thin, there's not much there. It's mostly going to be about these characters and their growth through this little uh, time that they're, you know, going through that you see in the film. And a lot of times, those films, they can linger. They can get stuck someplace. You can, you know, you have these fantastic scenes in this film where uh, once they're uh, forced to live in society, uh, Thompson McKenzie, she's walking along, you know, they're living on this farmland and she runs into this guy who's got a little bunny rabbit and she, or she finds a bunny rabbit and she takes it back to him and she goes to this class where they're, uh, she's teaching them how to handle bunny rabbits and do all these things. And it's a great scene because every time that she experiences something in the world, it, it never slows down and never becomes these other subplots, these other boring things. It literally just keeps uh, the character, it gr keeps the character growing. And I really enjoyed that. And there's never a moment where she goes out into the world and she just meets some like bratty ass kid who's playing video games or just anything like that. Everyone she meets is always teaching her something and showing her something that always has to do with nature. Deborah Granick's direction, it's not done in a way that, you know, a lot of these films can be where it's, it could be a sort of cinema verite documentary style, very shaky cam here. You don't get that at all. There's a lot of very just still, just the camera just never really moves. There's just a lot of still shots, a lot of beautiful shots in, in that organ. Uh, for us. She sort of just lets the actors go through what they're doing. She doesn't have too many fancy camera movements going on, but it doesn't need that in this film. Because like I said, the actions of the characters and everything that's going on in the film keeps you interested, keeps you going. I loved everything about this film, from the acting <clears throat> to everything that goes on behind the camera, the cinematography, the minimal score. There's barely any score in this, and even when there is, it's not this swelling, overdramatic music. It just plays well to the scenes that's happening. And it's a film that is better than Winter's Bone, in my opinion. Um, and it's a film that I think should see award consideration, not only for the acting, but for Deborah Granick. Um, her and Lynn Ramsey, I think, have made two fantastic, fantastic films that are really these sort of minimal films. The plots are very thin, but they're great showcases for actors. And they're just, just great kind of takes on these minimal stories, you know? They could just be done in a very generic way, but Deborah Granick, she does a fantastic job of doing it. Love it. Like I said, gave me a winner's bone all the way. Let's talk about our man, Ben Foster. Now, Ben Foster has been, in my opinion, underrated and overlooked for a very, very long time. Now, he's done some fantastic turns in stuff like 310 to Yuma, Alpha Dog, 
I mean, he could play the kind of, even Hell in High Water, he could play this kind of wild, crazy eye, you don't know what he's going to do next type person, but then he can also do these sort of quiet, sort of inward performances like here and leave no trace. Now, if he doesn't get nominated for an Oscar, I'm going to go live off the grid because this fucking, it's all a sham. Jonah Hill has two, put it this way, and Ben Foster doesn't have any. So let's just, <laughs> let's talk about that. Anyway, <clears throat> here, his performance is worthy of an Oscar, not because it's showy, but because it's not showy at all. Ben Foster is playing a army vet who doesn't want to live in society. He just can't. He can't be around people. He has PTSD. It's very difficult for him to kind of, you know, be social and, and deal with the situations that he would need to in order to survive in society. And Ben Foster does a fantastic job of showing all that because you, you don't ever get told that. He never has some monologue about any of that. It's literally just all in what Deborah Granick does with the direction, but it is also what he does in his acting. Everything he does with his face, the way that he carries himself, the way that he tries to be nice when there's people around, uh, he has this really great, these great moments of him just trying to smile and just be like, yeah, okay, to people when he doesn't really like what it is that they're telling him. And, and it's not that it's done in a comical way, but it's, it's funny because you can just see the, the frustration on, on Ben Foster, you know, and on his character. And I love everything about that. There's some great choices in it. His character wears uh, his army hat, but he doesn't have the, the American patch uh, flag on it. Um, there's just so many great things to just show how he's just sort of just disenfranchised with everything. And then there's like, he has like a, there's a sequence where he, you know, he has a dream and he wakes up because he hears a helicopter above them. And that's kind of the only sort of sort of flashback PTSD kind of thing that they do where it's that obvious. Everything else is done subtly and brilliantly and beautiful by the wonderful Ben Foster, who deserves an Oscar for playing a father who just wants the best for his kid, but it's mostly that he has a problem dealing with society and dealing with people. There's a great scene where, you know, at the beginning, you're watching them kind of live their daily life, and you see Ben Foster as this caring, loving father and you have no problem you're just like that makes sense that they would be living out there seems like she he's giving her a proper home everything happens seems like it's fine but then they show when they had to live out in society and then he decides to leave he decides to want to go back and find a new place and it shows them kind of lost in the rain they have no place to go they have no food they just have nothing and you sort of see this sort of different side and, and you don't see that he's not a good father but you do see that you know, maybe that's not the best. Maybe that's not the way to go. And Ben Foster does a fantastic job of doing that. So give him the Oscar already, or at least a nomination for Christ's sakes. Put him up there. Last, but definitely not least, Thomas McKenzie. Now, I'm ranting and raving about giving Ben Foster an Oscar. Let's get McKenzie one as well. Child actors can be hit or miss, especially in a lot of these films. And, oh boy, she is not a miss. She is a hit because of older she felt or kind of an old soul. She just really did feel like a kid, especially in the scenes where she needs to be discovering all the things that she doesn't really know about. She feels very much like a kid, but not movie acting kid. She felt like she was really just discovering these things for the first time. And then even the scenes in the chemistry between her and Ben Foster are very real and they're not over dramatic because like I said, Ben Foster plays a lot of the stuff inward. He doesn't really do a lot of over dramatic things that you know you could see a lesser film would have had there and a lesser child actress could have done that too but she doesn't the choices that she makes and a lot of holding back her tears and just a lot of the things she does are just very very uh you know it's it's just signs of uh, an actress who in the same way that they talked about jennifer lawrence in winter's bone who kind of is knows what they're doing and is going to do good work as they get older so thomas and mckenzie has this fantastic scene where walks into some lady and she's she's a beekeeper she's got all these bees and she shows her um you know she puts on the suit and she shows her tells her about you know all the stuff that you would know about bees how much you can get stung she kind of just takes off her glove and lets the bees walk on her and stuff like that and so later on in the film <clears throat> they're walking past that same place and it's her and her dad and she wants to show her dad that she puts on the bee suit for her dad, but she herself is not wearing the bee suit anymore. She just goes up to the bees, she lets the bees come out, <clears throat> she lets the bees crawl on her, and she's just like showing her dad, who's kind of nervously there, just smiling, letting him know it's okay. As long as you're friendly, they'll be friendly, they're not here to hurt you. 
And that's such a great, it's not only a great moment that's directed and just written because it just basically is the whole theme of that film, which I think is just basically, you know, you don't have to live by the society's rules. You don't have to uh, follow that community's rules, but you do need community. You do need a sense of, you know, a society. You need people around you to, to live. You can't just be your own off the grid person. And it's conveyed so beautifully in that scene through the direction, through the writing, but through the acting, Mackenzie Phillips. I hope you get an Oscar as well. You got also nice little performances from Dale Dickey and just other little actors and actresses who pop up here and there. They give very real, very natural performances and it all just ties together beautifully. I loved it all. Give them all an Oscar, goddammit. Leave no trace. In conclusion, this is gonna be, gonna be one of my favorites of the year. It's a fantastic follow-up to Winner's Bone. I actually like it a lot more than Winner's Bone. I think Deborah Granick actually just keeps a fantastic pace in this film. It could just linger, it could get boring. It never does. That's not to say it's some action-packed father, daughter, living off the grid, all running from the cops every second there's action type of thing. No, but there's stuff that does happen to them that excels the character. And that's what I really enjoyed about this film. And the acting is amazing. So go check this one out. I think everyone should go see it. I know it had a, a small release when I saw it, but I think it's getting a wider release. Go check this out. Deborah Granick should get award consideration for this because she was, you know, they talked about Winter's Bone and I think this is a lot better than Winter's Bone. So go check it out and make sure you leave no trace. And by that, I mean, pick up your shit. Pick up your shit in the movie theater, right? You don't gotta be slobs. You wouldn't come to my house and just leave your shit everywhere, right? I sat in fucking gum the other night. Do you understand that? I know who that is. <laughs>